Hey there, Albion Nazarene Church family and friends. I hope you're having a great day. We are going to be reading chapter 12 today of Luke's Gospel as we are journeying through the book of Luke, one uh, chapter at a time. So I hope you're enjoying this. Again, if you'd like to be a part of this in a way of reading a chapter, reach out to me. I'd love to have you help out. I know I've had some other people that are going to be doing chapters later down the road. But if you'd like to do one even this week, let me know. Reach out to me. I'd love to have you uh, be a part of this. So let's get into today's chapter, chapter 12. Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling on one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees, which is, hip, was, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said, what you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. And what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the rooftops. I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you whom you should fear. Fear him who, after the killing of the body, has power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than two, than many sparrows. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But he who disowns me before men will be disowned before the angels of God. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven." But anyone who blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. When you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. Verse 13. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Ma'am, who appointed me as judge and, and an arbiter or an arbiter between you? This, then he said to them, watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with anyone who stores up things for himself, but is not rich towards God. Verse 22. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or, or, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and body more than clothes. Consider the ravens. They do not sow or reap. They have no storehouse or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable, and how much more valuable you are than birds? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? Since you cannot do this very thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O, o you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourselves that will not wear out. A treasure in heaven that will not be exhausted where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Verse 35. 
Be dressed, ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like men waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so they so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. I tell you the truth, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the second or third watch of the night. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Peter, uh, Peter asked, Lord, are you telling this parable to us or to everyone? The Lord answered, Who then is the faithful and wise manager? whom the master put in charge of his servants to give them their food allowance at the proper time. It will be good for, the, for that servant whom the master finds doing so when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose the servant says to himself, my master is taking a long time in coming. And he then begins to beat the men servants and maid servants and to eat and drink and get drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, and at an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the unbelievers. That servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. I have come to bring fire on the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. From now on, there will be five in one family divided against each other, three against two, two against three. They will be divided father against son, son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Verse 54. He said to the crowd, When you see a cloud rising in the west, in the, in the west immediately you say, It's going to rain, and it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, it's going to be hot, and it is. Hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret this present time? Why don't you judge for yourselves what is right? Are you going with your adversary to the magistrate? I'm sorry, as you, go, as you are going with your ad adversary to the magistrate, try hard to be reconciled to him on the way, or he may drag or he may drag you off to the judge, and the judge turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. We think about that at Christmas time, we talk about Jesus as the Prince of Peace and, and the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he is all those things. But it's interesting that he says in Luke 12, we talks about that I have come, I've come not to bring peace, but turn father against son, son against father. And he goes, he goes long, uh, forward with that. God is trying to tell you something right now, right? He's trying to work something out in you. The thing is, are you listening? Are you prepared? Is your heart and mind open to what God is trying to talk to you this Advent season? I hope it is. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We're grateful for you. We're grateful for your words here. Thank you for the challenges that you give us. That we May we be prepared, Lord, at any time for your coming again. We are grateful for you this Advent season. Amen. Hey, again, family and friends, if you are interested in being part of this, reach out to me. I'd love for you to read a chapter every day. I hope you're having a blessed day. We'll see you later. Bye.